a station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And good afternoon and thanks for joining us for DC News Now at 4. Here's a look at some of the stories we're working on across the DMV. And we have excessive heat. It has arrived here in the DMV. And on top of that, we have severe storms popping as well. We'll give you updates on all of that here in just a bit. And Damon, that heat creating problems for thousands in the region. Tenants of one apartment in Roslyn are being told that they won't have AC to battle the heat. Our Haley Milan spoke with the residents about Dominion and the dilemma. And for the second day in a row, the heat not keeping the commanders off the practice field. And this time, the fans got a look at all the action. We're going to take you to Ashburn for another exciting day for the franchise and the fans. And thanks for joining us on this Thursday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. Annalisa Gale is on assignment. Our top story this afternoon is the sweltering heat makes its way into our area, and it's a DMV first warn day. Taking a look like a look live outside, it's rosin, and again, you can just kind of tell it's just a hot, muggy, awful day. And we have team coverage on this DMV first warn day. Heli Mylon and Daniel Hamburg, they're going to tell us that this heat is how this heat is affecting people across the region. But we start with meteorologist Damon Madsen. And Damon, it's not just the heat that you're tracking, but the chance of storms as well. Right, Mark, and we actually do already have a couple of storms. It did not take long, folks, in all of this heat and humidity for this severe threat to get going. And we have a severe thunderstorm watch that is in place. That's what all of these yellow counties indicate here. That watch goes until 11 p.m. tonight. And within the last hour, we've already had a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. We have one cluster of storms here that is moving out of Jefferson County, and it's right along the Loudoun Frederick County line here. This is following Route 340 moving toward Frederick. Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb driving the radar for me here, checking out some of the winds with this storm. Well, thankfully, we're not seeing any severe wind with this. No rotation either, it appears, as we aren't seeing any sort of indication of that. But that storm right there is going to be a heavy rainfall and lightning maker. That severe thunderstorm warning goes until 415. Now, we have an additional warning for Garrett County that goes until 445. Storms have yet to arrive out of Pennsylvania, but you see on the radar picture here we have this line that is going to eventually move into the Interstate 68 corridor. We're talking Grantsville, Friendsville here within the next 10 to 15 minutes, close to 410, 415. You can expect to see this line Frostburg by 421. And once again, that will be a heavy rainfall lightning maker possibly then also some damaging winds could be a threat with that. So the storms are firing and on top of that, folks, the temperatures are downright sweltering and we have heat advisories that go until 8 p.m. across the entire area minus Garrett County. But regardless, everybody is feeling the excessive heat that has built up the, out there already with heat index values well into the triple digits acting as fuel, of course, for these storms. Now tomorrow, folks, it gets even hotter and we have an excessive heat Heat warning covering the I-95 corridor down through Southern Maryland from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Friday with heat advisories covering the western half of the viewing area as heat index values could reach if not exceed 110 degrees tomorrow. So folks, find ways to stay cool, find ways to stay hydrated. We'll talk about just how long this heat lasts and if we have another threat for storms later on toward the weekend. All of that will be coming up in your full forecast in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. In DC, a lot of outdoor activities are canceled because of the heat and some train systems are delayed too. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg joins us live on the National Mall. Daniel, DC Public Schools canceled all outdoor activities. Mark, those activities are canceled from today through Sunday because of this extreme heat. That includes all recess, physical education classes, outdoor activities. We're talking field trips, any school-sponsored events that are planned 
for the outdoors. Now, because of this excessive heat, there are also problems with Amtrak. Amtrak, uh, the Northeast Corridor, uh, has speed restrictions causing delays on several lines there. And the Maryland Department of Transportation says to, uh, to provide contingencies for possible equipment failure in the severe heat, it's canceled. The Mark Penn Line train 440 out of Union Station that leaves tonight at 535 p.m. both today and tomorrow. While here on the National Mall, people are drinking a lot of water, getting some ice cream, whatever they can do to stay cool, because especially for people from out of town, they still want to experience the museums and monuments. We're drinking slushies and tea, and um, we've got plenty of water, and we're staying in the shade wherever we can. I think it's more the humidity that's, that's tough, but um, I, I love coming out here for a lunch run. I personally would not be out here for a run in this 100 degree heat index, but that guy you heard from just there said he hydrated before he plans to hydrate after and take a very cool shower there. We are staying cool ourselves, setting up in the shade right here. We're live on the National Mall. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. All right, Daniel, thank you. And hundreds of people in an apartment complex in Roslyn will be without power for eight hours this weekend while crews work on an underground transformer. DC News Now's Haley Mylon, who covers Northern Virginia for us, is live there this afternoon. And Haley, you spoke uh, with residents about how they're preparing for the outage and what have you learned about what caused it? Well, Mark Dominion Energy says that this is urgent emergency work to repair that underground transformer that's leaking mineral fluid. A spokeswoman says that if the work is not done soon, it could cause a larger outage or even cause a fire. Now, residents here at the Roslyn Park apartment say it couldn't come at a worse time. They will be without power, without AC overnight tomorrow night. Now, the lucky ones are managing to find other accommodations. When there's a heat wave warning, the first thing we want to do is run to our AC. Zan Risby's apartment won't have AC tomorrow night. That's why. I'm going to be out of here. I am uh, found accommodations elsewhere. Neighbors who have no other options are going to have to brave the heat despite health concerns. We have, we have a baby um, and babies are recommended to sleep between 68 and 72 degrees. Dominion Energy planned the project two weeks ago, but Kate Nere Tipton says he only learned of the outage from his building management one week ago. There's a, com a continued lack of communication between the property management and the residents. And he's worried about his neighbors who are elderly or have disabilities. You know Why can't you do this when it's cooler? Period. Nancy Perkis says she's preparing by filling a cooler with ice and buying a battery powered light. She thinks the work should be done another time. But Dominion spokeswoman Peggy Fox says this leak is an emergency that must urgently be dealt with. If we didn't know it was leaking, uh, then we would definitely have an unplanned outage. Uh, we would have maybe some infrastructure damage to our system and we could even see a fire. Nice little gust of wind finally here in Arlington. Now Fox tells me that there will be 254 customers total impacted by this outage. Mark. Haley, is this something that folks across Arlington will have to deal with this summer? Mark, I'm told that this is an isolated emergency incident, this work here. However, it's an unfortunate one for the residents here at Roslyn Park. Haley Milan, thank you. And by the way, if you rent in D.C. or your A.C. isn't working and your landlord isn't helping, you can still get help. The district's office of the attorney general has a free mediation hotline. You can call the number on your screen. That's 202-442-9828. In Virginia, a man was hit and killed by a car in Chantilly early this morning. Just before 6, Loudoun County investigators found the man in the area of John Mosby Highway and Pleasant Valley Road. He died at the scene. The driver of the car remained on the scene. At this time, the victim's name is not being released as police are contacting his family. Well, the woman killed in Wednesday's fatal car crash in Prince George's County was 64-year-old Karis Jennings. It happened on Landover Road in Landover, and police say that five cars were traveling northbound when they stopped at a red light. Then one of the drivers hit Jennings' car before hitting three others. 
Jennings died at the hospital. The other four drivers sustained minor injuries. Well, football season is right around the corner, and today the Washington Commanders were back on the practice field for day two of training camp. And this time, they weren't alone. Thousands and thousands of fans in attendance to take in the action. Sports reporter Jake Rahm was out in Ashburn at Commanders Park and has more from practice. It was day two of Commander's training camp, but it was day one for fans in attendance. And you could hear them bright and early, loud and proud out here in Ashburn. Before practice even started, fans lining up, ready to greet their favorite players, taking the practice field. Even new owner Josh Harris meeting with fans, giving out high fives, taking some photos, signing autographs, definitely making his presence known a week into his ownership. As for the team, they said the fans brought an extra bit of energy to practice this morning. When the fans are cheering you on, you feel that energy at practice. You know, practice is, is tough as it is, but when you got the support out here like we do, um, it just makes things much easier. You know, they come to support us. You know, this is what I'm kind of used to, and this, this, this was bringing a lot of energy to the defense, you know, just seeing them out here cheering for us. You could hear the fans get, get excited about it, and guys come back to the huddle, they got grins on their face and stuff like that, so their energy is part of what helps us. So today was only day one with fans in attendance, and as we near the weekend, the expectations for the Burgundy and Gold faithful to arrive are at an all-time high. Reporting here at Commander's Park in Ashburn, Jake Rahm, DC News Now.